and in this video we'll be having a look at initial reversionary and equivalent yield. So I already have a video on the all risks yield, which is essentially a yield, which is a percentage of annualized returns um, of the price uh, of a property, um, which explains that how this yield takes into account risks and it looks at basically different types of market risks. Now there are other types of yields, such as initial reversionary and equivalent, and these are even more important because these help an investor to make decisions on whether the asset is right for them, and it also helps with when you're valuing a property or looking at future cash flow, so they're very important. So these three are pretty easy to understand conceptually, and this is what I plan to do in this video. So with initial yields, essentially you're looking at the income that's already been uh, that's already there the initial income that you're already getting on the property as a percentage of the price so if you have an asset which is already getting a hundred pounds um, in rental value then basically you're looking at that hundred pounds as a percentage of the price now there's three different types you have um, a gross initial yield a net and a running so essentially the gross uh, initial yield looks at the rent passing over the price paid whereas the net initial yield is the same thing, but the price paid um, also includes a purchase cost, so it gives you a more realistic um, value um, for the yield because it includes your costs. And finally, the running initial yield, this basically um, looks at the rent passing, but over the current value, so it tells you like right now as it stands, what would be the yield on the property. The reversionary yield is only applicable to like reversionary instruments and by this I mean you have an asset which is um, got a, a rent on it but it's different to what is market rent but there is an expectation that at some point in the future this rent will revert back to um, market value and so you would use the reversionary yield in that situation because you would look at um, you know the reversionary income i.e. what you're going to get once um, the, the income returns back to the market value. Um, so basically how you calculate is the full rental value over the price paid. So you can think of these as distinct parts of your investment. So you might buy um, a property which has already got a tenancy on it, but in that tenancy, the rent is um, uh, lower than what is market value. So then you look at the initial yield and assessing your situation right now, but there's an expectation that um, when the lease ends, say in seven years, then you're going to have a reversionary instrument because it's going to revert back to its market value, and then you would use reversionary yield there. Now, the equivalent yield, essentially what you're doing is you're making a yield which is um, constant. So you have a constant capitalization rate, and capitalization rate is simply uh, what the multiplier, what you're using to turn your income into a capital value sum. So it's also called the internal rate of return and it doesn't change, so it's constant throughout the instrument's um, time, um, time life, lifetime, yeah, lifetime. Um, so it would include any reversions that are going on, any voids that would happen um, in the cash flow, any expenditures. What it does not include, however, is that any changes in market rent. So um, it's only looking um, at reversions, voids, and all these things it's accounting for uh, without, the without the idea that market rent is going to change. Um, how this is calculated is what you need to do is you need to get your two cash flows, you need to do some interpolation. Or what usually happens on Excel is you have you set out your two different cash flows and then you find gold seek find a yield rate which um, basically works in both the cash flows and this is called the equivalent yield. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps.